All right, guys, we're gonna rip this thing apart. Now I have this, uh, I have had this apart, it was a long time ago. This is a different transmission than we have sitting in the truck. Um, but I'm gonna tear this one apart and just see what it looks like inside, because I can't remember. I wanna say that it was okay, um, but we will see, I guess. See the bottom of it's cracked right there, but that shouldn't make any difference for what we're doing. Um, but anyways, we'll rip this thing apart, see what it looks like inside. Um, now, disclaimer, not a transmission guy. So take anything I say within a great, with a grain of salt. And some of the stuff I'm sure I'm probably gonna call the wrong name, um, what it is, so just so you know. But I have had a few of these things apart. So what you need to do is you need to get these, your TV cable lever and your uh, parks and your selector lever off. Not all of them are the same size. I don't smash myself in the face. I'm just gonna grab a basket. And I'm gonna loosen off the front band. Which wasn't tight anyway. Like I said, none of this stuff's probably gonna be tight because I have had this thing apart before. Uh, what else we got? These rear. There's a snap ring underneath here. Actually, I should grab the snap ring pliers. Got pliers. And like I said, I have built a few transmissions. Um, I'm not a transmission guy. But I have built a few. And my buddy Craig um, in Ontario, which you guys will meet this summer, um, provided he wants to be on the YouTube channel, I'd imagine he will. Um, he's bought, built hundreds of transmissions. So I have him and then a, fr a friend of mine, uh, Carl. Carl and Steve are commercial powertrain power train here in Balzac. They, uh, they usually build my transmissions for me. Um, being that I wanted to show you guys a build, I figured, well, I'll just build. This is going to be the first big horsepower one I've ever built. So hopefully I know how to do it and it works. Because if not, that'll suck. But I'm pretty confident that I can make it work. The only thing that I'm not gonna do myself on this one, Shays, when we do Shays, you guys have seen that transmission when we tore it apart, the 47RE. Uh, we're gonna do all of that one. And I think that I'm gonna do the valve body as well. I'm not gonna do the valve body for this one because Steve has a bunch of little tricks and tips and stuff or tricks uh, that he does to them um, that I do not know. And being that this thing's probably gonna make around a thousand horsepower and it's got a lot of money, it's gonna have a lot of money in shafts in it. I don't want to kill a bunch of shafts um, for the learning experience part of it, right? So, just so you're aware. Get this thing pulled off here. This is probably going to be a little longer video. Um, probably, I would say, probably 20, minute, 20 to 25 minutes ish. Probably. Shiny valve body. Um, so those pan bolts are 13 or half. I think they're actually 13. Uh, no, actually, they're probably half. Actually, we'll look at it. Yeah, they're half. Pull the valve body bolts out. The reason I say that, I don't know if this valve body is new or not. I know that this transmission had very little miles, kilometers on it, miles, kilometers, whatever you want to call it. Um, it had an issue. And I can't remember what we did. We did something. We did put a different transmission. Oh no, we took a transmission out of another truck and put a, a transmission from another truck in it. Um, 
um, because the guy was just sick of trying to fix it. Pull the valve body out first. But I don't know. There again, like I said, I don't know. Uh, well, it has had some upgrades to it. So it's got this. I'm not, I'll have to look. I'll put it in here. This little U clip here has been replaced with a heavy duty one so it doesn't break. I'm pretty sure that's a heavy duty one. But we are going to have to put a new connector and stuff on it. That one's broken and I'm not interested in screwing around with. Uh, broken one that usually is supposed to go that way oh sorry like this it was definitely upside down but well, all that stuff's going to get replaced with new stuff anyway band strut usually this will be a lot thicker like when you buy an uh, actually you can see that one's bent see how it's bent a little bit you guys be able to see that so Basically, that's what happens. These will turn into a pretzel. And that's bad. Bad news bears when that happens for you. Band strut. This will be replaced as well. too <laughs> been a while since i had it apart so i can't remember what we i, I said i know we took it apart because i think we like i said i can't remember exactly what we did but anyways it was a long time ago now we'll spin it around here pull the pump out pump assembly so that piece that i just pulled off is the overdrive housing uh so it has your overdrive direct and overdrive uh brake clutches in it and then by the look of it it is a, a 40 a true 48 pump because it has a ring right here it has a ring right yeah i put grease on here just so it wouldn't but there's a ring right here um versus <laughs> this is one off 47 and in that same spot where that one is, there's no ring there, and it's an anti drain back seal, it's called. But that's what it is. Uh, keeps the torque converter from draining back over. So I'm told. So you need a little slide hammer. There is, you can pry in there too, but I can't get the pry bar to go in or the screwdriver to go in where I want. So I just made up a quick little puller here. It's just a wrist, Cummins wrist pin and a piece of threaded rod or all thread you guys call it, I think. I call it threaded rod. So this is the pump. Let's just see what this thing looks like. Chrome socket on the impact. Aha! 
Chrome socket for the win. <clears throat> so, just gotta look inside there. Pump looks okay. Can't feel anything. I'm taking the coloring off it, but it, it's not marred up or anything. The feel of it. <clears throat> it does have a 48 pump in it, so that's cool. Pump is back. Oh no, the pump's the right way. Has the right bushing in it. Like I said, I don't think that this thing is that old. And then I guess you're supposed to. Ah, the bushing inside here, the surface inside there looks good. So, uh, this is all stuff that I've been learning just in the last couple of months here, but <clears throat> but if you look in here, if you guys look, this is a 47 pump, and if you look how wide this, this tang is right here versus a 48 pump, you guys will be able to see the difference, but it's quite a bit wider. The 48 pump is quite a bit wider and quite a bit bigger too. So you want to use a 48 pump and a 48 for sure. Um, you can also upgrade if you're doing a 47. You can upgrade to a 48, but I don't know if there's anything you have to do uh, internally to do that. Uh, that'll be something that I'll have to look into um, next time. We're not. No, we'll probably just use a 47 on Shays, I think. Uh, but we'll find out, I guess. <clears throat> band it's not smoked but this isn't the band i'm going to use i'm going to use a one out of a 727 solid and <clears throat> this is just a stock shaft. we won't be using that shaft it just has four forward clutches, which we will, I'm going to be, I'm going to upgrade it to five forward clutches. Um, actually, those clutches actually don't look that, like I said, I don't think this training had that many kilometers on if I remember right, um, but we'll see. And then there's a wavy, there's a wavy snap ring at the bottom here. And if you take that out, so this right here, this plunger, um, or piston shoves up on this. Like I said, I'm not trying you guys, so take this with a grain of salt. But this shoves, the piston shoves up on this, which is what applies this clutch anytime you're going forwards. The only time this is disengaged is when you're sitting, or yeah, when you're sitting. So is the only time this is in engaged. And apparently the four clutches will actually take quite a bit of, of, um, of power. Uh, but I'm going to see about upgrading to five clutches because, well, I'm like that. And I think, I think, I think, I think, I know how to do it. But we'll, we'll see how that works out. Because it's literally, I'm reading everything. Um, I'm reading everything off the old interwebs. So uh, it might be not good. So that's the wavy one that I was talking about. And then, there we go. Now something I did want to show because this I think is actually the wrong. So this this is plastic that's inside here, and I don't know if it's. A, I think it's a kind of a ceiling ring. But you can actually get steel ones of these, and they're out of the 727s, the old Torque Flight 727s. So I will be doing that. And then this, the ply piston, is actually um, the wrong apply piston for this. <clears throat> this is the apply piston that you want to use. And then this, so this is a 47 apply piston, which, and I believe that the 727 used the same one. We'll actually find out because I'm going to rip a 727 apart for some scavenger some parts. And then this is the one that you want to use so you can see the finger difference. So these are apparently a lot better. So put that back just so that I got all this 
stuff in the right spot. Organized somewhat. They, we will be building the tranny for this in the next couple weeks um, because I want to I want to get this thing together. Yeah, even these clutches aren't in that bad of shape. Almost like brand new. I don't know what kind of clutches they are. Probably just cheap ones, likely. But there is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six in here, which I believe is the stock clutch count for that, uh, for a 48 and then a 47. Um, yeah. yeah, so if you look at this, this being the 48, and then this one being the 47, you can see where this, these things are heavy, uh, but that ridge versus that one is in a different spot. So you can put more, let's see. Oh yeah, it's definitely different. Um, you can put more clutches in this one than you can in this one. <clears throat> so, I'm gonna be putting, so this is originally a uh, six clutch drum. So that's your forward, this is your direct. Um, I'm gonna be putting eight clutches in this one. So we'd be putting two more clutches, two more clutch count in this one. And there's more stuff inside there. There's a piston, because that's what applies it on and off, is this piston, and then there's springs underneath here, but I'll show that when I'm building it, um, because I, uh, I don't wanna take it apart three times. But I'm gonna have to monkey around to see about how I'm gonna get eight clutches in that and still get the same. Uh, the right um, height. Ah, the planetaries. Uh, oh, we got that off already. Oh, it's got snap on it. All right back, just gonna grab snap ring pliers. And for you guys that were uh, were wondering what happened to Shay's tranny build, it, it is happening. It's just he had to save up a little bit more, a little bit more money to uh, to get it on the go. But it will be coming. We'll be doing the the uh, 47. Uh, I feel your I feel your pain, Richard. I don't know if you guys watch uh, Precision Transmission or not, but these things are not, I should have grabbed the straight ones. They are not that much fun to get out. Aha! Oh. Come on. There we go. If you guys watch uh, Precision Transmission or not, um, those things can be a pain. But you want to look at all this stuff. This is actually something that's kind of cool. If you, for you guys that have never done any transmission stuff, this the pressure that this asserts. Now this is a six gear steel planetary, which is what you're going to use if you're doing high performance stuff. But you can actually this. This planetary shoves on this washer hard enough, and it doesn't hurt the washer, but it shoves hard enough to impregnate or to like to put an impression from these holes. It goes crazy. So now what I'm going to do, um, because I'm like that apparently, is I'm actually going to machine this and rollerize this. Um, and as far as I know, nobody showed on the interwebs how to do that. Probably because it's a secret. But I figured out the secret and I don't care. So I'm gonna put it out there. And if it doesn't work, then uh, I did it wrong. But I, I, I know how to make it work. It's really not, the machining side of things, as soon as you figure out the machining side of stuff, and then there's that same style of washer right here, back here. Um, but this actually should have been a big washer, I believe. 
I'm not wrong. But anyways, uh, the drum looks okay. I don't see, it's got a little bit of wear on it, but it's not, oh no, I guess it does have some wear on it. I might have to use a different drum, because it's definitely got some wear in it. Ah, uh, we'll see. Probably use a different drum. See how much a new one is. So that's the same idea. So there's a, another one of these washers and you can see that impression in there. Uh, and I will, I'm gonna put a, a Torrington bearing, they call it, which is just a fancy name for a, for a needle bearing, basically. Yeah, and then there's, and you can see that one too. It's just the same idea, right? I don't know whether the last guy that had this thing apart replaced these or not. Almost kind of like he didn't. But anyways, I'm going to be rollerizing it, so it doesn't really matter. Planetaries look like they're in reasonable shape. They don't look hammered. Input shaft, or uh, in, sorry, inter, uh, intermediate shaft, which we'll be replacing. drum spread goes drum feels good and all screwed up inside and the feel of it, it's not there's a little tiny mark in there so I don't know I'll have to I'll have to inspect it a little bit closer and we'll see and rear band it looks basically brand new. I'll probably replace it because I don't know what brand it is. And then the rear support. Extra bits, don't know what that's from. Piece of plastic from something. Oh, I should have taken the Sprag out. Huh. Sprag's out now. We'll just throw this because I'm going to replace this with a new one. Um, I don't want to have a sprag issue. I'm also going to pin. I'm going to show you guys how to pin the. Uh, um, I don't know if you call it a sprag plate or the plate that's in the back of the the housing. Um, which basically, what happens if the sprag, if you if it if the sprag kind of gets stuck a little bit or something like that, it'll spin that inside the case, which you guys seen in in Shay's training, and it just destroyed the the case. So I'm going to pin that one in. Uh, for some reason, nobody shows that either. So I'm going to do that too. Um, but we're going to pull the rear center support, I think they call it, out. Because I wanted to show you guys something. So the this is what I want to show you guys. So your your hot oil, two coolers come out of this port here, and then it comes back to this port. Now it goes directly into that port and goes into this little hole to cool everything back here. This is actually an updated one because it has an it has an O-ring there. Um, yeah, this one's in good shape, other than my dirty 
hands all over it. It doesn't even have a mark in it. But the something that there is an upgrade. This one hasn't been done. To help flood everything back there before what you do is you drill. I'll show you guys in the video later. Basically, you drill a hole in here to add more oil to the system. And I'll show you how to do that too. Like I said, there's a bunch of this stuff that, that's completely new to me. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. I'm going to put this thing together. We're going to knock out a bunch of thousand. We're going to run it out a thousand horsepower or in and then around there anyway. Um, and we'll see what happens. So if it lasts, then I guess I build transmission. I can build a transmission. If it doesn't last, then um, we'll try it again. Anyways, like, subscribe, hit me down in the comments. Thanks for my Patreons and catch us on the next one.